in Swift 3, we have three different types of collections. The first of which are arrays. Arrays are useful for storing ordered sets of data. Apple's definition of an array is an array stores values of the same type in an ordered list. The same value can appear in an array multiple times at different positions. So let's see what these arrays do by implementing some inside of our playground. With your playground open, delete all of the code in there apart from the import statement. Let's create first an empty array of integers. Let's call this var sum ints is equal to, and the way we define an array is by using square brackets. We tell Swift what kind of array or what kind of variable type we want to store in this array, which is an integer in this case, and then we initialize it by using two empty brackets. So now we have an empty array of integers. Let's create an empty array of strings. So var sum strings is equal to open your bracket and put the variable type inside and open and close your brackets to initialize it. Now an empty array isn't exactly useful, so let's add a value to these. First, let's take our sum ints array and then hit dot and we want append. And append allows us to add a new element. So let's drop the number four into that array. And of course, we can do the same with our sum strings dot append and I can put my initial into there or perhaps my two initials gk and if you'll notice on the right hand side it tells us exactly what our arrays contain gk and four now what happens if i try to put an integer in my strings one let's say six we should get an error because we have said this array contains only strings so you cannot put an integer into it. I could put a number in inverted commas as a string, but be careful because Swift doesn't understand that that's a number. It thinks it's a string. So let me just revert these to how they were. Now there's a shorthand way of adding elements to your array and we can have some ints, we can have plus equals, and then in brackets, we can add our array. And in fact, I could add a six and an eight to that array if I wanted, and Swift would quickly or swiftly add those elements into my sum ints array, as you can see on the right-hand side. The same, of course, goes for sum strings. Now, of course, we don't always have to do it this way. We can also initialize our array the following way. So if we come up to our top line, hit our colon, tell it this is an array of integers, and then we delete this code here, we can then give it an initial set of values for that array. So this declaration of the array is very similar to what we had when we looked at variables in Swift 3. Of course, the same thing applies to string, so please try that now if you want to. Also note that these append functions and these plus equal functions all work as before. It doesn't matter how much stuff is actually in your array. And I'm sure there's a theoretical limit, but in reality, you're never actually going to hit that limit unless you've programmed things really badly. Okay, what if we want to know how many elements are in our array? It's a very common thing that you need to know. For example, if you had an array of people's personal data, like addresses, phone numbers, and what have you, you would say, how many data entries do I have? So the way we get that is by having sum ints dot count. And that returns 
a number of entries that we have for our sum ints. And eventually, when Xcode gets round to it, come on Xcode, it should plus out on the right. If it doesn't, we might need to add a print to that, and print will pop it out. So on the right, we now have seven elements in our sum ints array. There's a backslash n there because that stands for a new line. And that new line is translated down here in the console where we can see a seven. And the next time we print something, it will put it below that seven. So don't worry about that backslash n. That's not part of your array or your count or anything. So of course we can do the same print some strings dot count and that will also print the size of our sum strings array which at this point is not very big it's only one and we can see that plotted down here and of course on the right hand side now the final thing we'll look at is how to get a value out of the array so let's say i want to get this number 88 out of some ints well Let's go ahead and print some ints. And then to grab an array, we have to refer to the index of it, which is something we put inside of square brackets. Now, there's an important concept in programming, in all programming, is that arrays are zero indexed. So when we look at our sum ints array, element number on the first position is actually indexed with the number of zero. Then the one in the second position is element one. In third position is element two. So we have zero, one, two, three. Zero index simply means we start counting from zero. And if you're starting out at programming, that is the most common mistake you're going to make, I promise you. So we want to grab element number three, which is actually at an index of two. And when we do that, it reports back that we have the number 88 sitting there. Okay, there are tons more operators, of course, for arrays, but those are the basics that will allow you to get going when making your apps.